Hey, hey, everybody, it's your girl, Nicole Wiley, and we are here today with our weekly member spotlight. Uh, so before we get into the weekly member spotlight, a few great things going on here at the GCNKAA. Uh, next Thursday, May 18th, is our Day at the Races. Um, this is going to be an awesome event, and it is actually sold out. So we're expecting a really big turnout next week, um, as well as our fall golf outing is coming up next month in June, and uh, it's sold out as well. So thank you all for everyone that's participating. These Both of these events will be very um great and good time for us to all get together and socialize. Um, something new to the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, we actually have a spot in the Pride Parade this year. Um, so registration is now open on our website if you're interested in joining us in the parade. So now that we've got all the announcements out of the way, we are going to start our interview today with our member who is John Berniker of Berniker Brothers Roofing. Hey, John. Um, so I have had the fortunate opportunity to work with John for probably over 10 years. So um, now we're just going to let the rest of you find out a little bit about John. So welcome, John. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Uh, so tell us a little bit about Berniker Brothers Roofing. Well, we are a roofing company. Um, no, we uh, <laughs> we do flat um, flat roofing. We do servicing of flat roofing. We do um, metal working, especially metal working. We do a little bit of residential. Uh, we don't do a lot, but our main industry would be flat commercial roofing, um, whether it be shingle or flat roofs, um, and then obviously servicing all of them. So um, that's right. kind of our our niche, I guess, is the right thing, so. Awesome. So you do um, a lot of multifamily apartment communities and townhouses, and then you also do, like, commercial, like, large large roof projects as well. Correct, correct. So we do buildings, um, not only multifamily. Um, we kind of range anywhere between, you know, uh, a multifamily um, all the way, even, like, your um, small roof that you might have on a multi with a shingle roof right. thing all the way up to probably Walmart size type would be the best comparison. Type okay. Yeah. Well. Makes sense. So um, that's kind of, you know, and then uh, the other guys usually move in after that with the large. Okay. Ones, so. Right. Right. <laughs> that's still pretty big though. A Walmart, I mean, Walmart is huge. So that's, that's pretty big. Yeah. Um, so yeah. How long have you guys been in business? Uh, 74 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah, and nice. I wanted grandpa here, but he's always up to something. So yeah, you know, <laughs> I think he would probably be uh, um, a little confused by the whole uh, Zoom call. So I think he would, yeah. you know, not really right. know what to make heads or tails of that on. So. <laughs> so you are a third generation roofer as well, right? Correct. Correct. I am. Right. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. And it was, so my grandpa, um, sorry, I don't know if you can cut that out, but my grandpa <laughs> is uh, um grandpa's the owner um dad runs everything and then obviously i'm an operations manager um but my grandpa got started with his brother hit burner awesome. brothers back in 1950 ah, got it so my great grandpa was actually a roofer too and that's how it yeah. started okay um my great grandpa passed away at a very i had my grandpa was 40 years old when he passed away and my grandpa was 16 years old and with his brother, then took kind of over, you know, to provide for the family and everything. And they they had that's this whole cool. garage full of roofing material that they were like, well, I guess we're roofers now. So that's how it all started. <laughs> so. so that's awesome. So in all technicality, four generations. And it's kind of cool how, you know, they picked it up and just kept going with it. Here we are 74 years later. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's a testament to the work you guys do as well, that you've been able to be in business and successful. And um, so it has a lot to do with, you know, how you treat your customers, the quality of product that you provide as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you were talking to a first generation roofer, what type of advice would you give them? A first generation? Oh, man. Yeah, like it's their new opening, their brand new roofing company and like 
what did you learn? Like, just if you had one good piece of advice, what would it be? Um, honestly, you know, you don't need a lot of advertisement and everything else like that. Really, word of mouth is still the biggest thing. I know a lot of guys are like, you know, obviously all over the internet and I see their trucks everywhere, but word of mouth is still by far. So, like you said, the quality of work yeah. and the relationship is huge because sure. more likely that's how grandpa did it. Um, even with the multifamily, you know, they all know somebody. So they're, you know, Lou Hellman would then go say, Hey, oh, yeah, you know, Hey, get Berniker. They do good work. And then that's how it transpired to now we're working on even the larger buildings um, and everything else like that, that we do is all from word of mouth. And it was nothing to do with my grandpa never put anything on the trucks. There was no, well, you know, you know, grandpa never advertised anything and, you know, even uniform wise, grandpa just had red shirts. So a lot right. of trying to get, you know, they spend a lot on their advertisement budget when they should be spending more, you know, on relationships and also the quality of work, like you said. So, right. Right. So don't waste a lot of money on advertising. Just, you know, give people a fair price and do good work and you'll stay in business, right? You'll be successful. Right. I love it. I love it. So uh, in your industry, are you, did you guys face a lot of challenges during COVID? Are you still facing any types of challenges? Like what are the biggest obstacles you have um, as far as your business? Um, I would, well, and I know everybody is in the same lump sum. Um, labor is a big thing. We did run into COVID uh, labor shortage, uh, or not labor shortage, I'm sorry, material shortage. So right. projects were getting pushed out because they just couldn't get the material. And uh, so um, you kind of have to be the bearer of bad news uh, to certain projects to say, we can't get this until this. And like I said, the relationship's huge because I would say majority of our customers are very understanding and be like, okay, we get it, you know, everything else like that with the material. Now, the labor shortage, it's gotten a little better for us, but um, labor shortage is still a uh, an ongoing battle. Uh, I don't blame them. A lot of guys don't want to be... Uh, roofers i know even you know yeah um, pinnacle and all them probably run the same thing with black toppers and concrete guys right. not a whole lot of young guys are like yeah i want to go do roofing you know right. when it's 100 degrees out so yeah and i get that i mean um a lot of our skilled labor uh roles are this is a struggle to find people i'm i feel like and i and i keep saying this i'm, I'm trying to figure out how to break the barrier of what we do as an industry as a whole, because even though you guys do roofing or another company does, we're still a part of the apartment industry. You know, you yes. do have other people that you service, but, you know, apartment industry is, is always consistent, it's steady work for all vendors, right? Yeah. As well as, as us, but it's, it's kind of hard to explain that to somebody up and coming, yeah. right? Kind of hard to explain what we do and why we do it and all the great things that we do. So I'm really trying to work on breaking that barrier. So it's I, it's it's tricky, you know. It's, it is very tricky. You know, um, especially, you know, better than anybody with some of the younger generations to really, you know, I, I don't know. It's good communication wise and relationship wise. Sure. Not a big thing with them anymore. Um, Agreed. but it's it's tough to kind of say, hey, you know. You probably need to pick a career and this wouldn't, you know, this would be a good career, but sure. you know, that's yeah. where it's kind of tough to engrave on a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I was the same way too, but that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had no idea what I wanted to do. No clue. I fell in no. the like, You know, if you were to I tell knew me I needed a ago. job. Right. All right. So, I knew I needed a job and I I thought I was just answering phones literally. And I was like, what am I doing at this apartment community? And the rest is history. But I honestly just, you know, came from a family where you either go to school or go to work. And I was like, ah, I'll pick work. I need money. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as far as the multifamily industry or what would you suggest, like things we need to do, like that we can better improve, we could do different. Um, um, as far as with the multifamily um industry as far as it goes um um i don't know if you can cut this out i don't really <laughs> it's all good no 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 we're just talking no we're just talking so let's just say um for instance from the roofing side like do you feel like that we should start um 
preparing to replace more roofs? Like, are we coming to the point where a lot of roofs are aging and we need to start doing more replacements? Do you think repair, like, based on what you're seeing out there? Yeah, no, that's a good point. Okay, no, I see kind of where you're heading at with it. So um, I think it's good, like, with BRG um, is a great example. Am I allowed to say BRG on here? Is yeah, she okay? was. <laughs> with BRG and uh, with BRG, at least, they're very proactive with their roofs. And I think that's very good as far as because the roofs aren't the sexiest thing um, when it comes to projects, you know. Okay. Um, I know you, a lot of your tenants are like, oh, man, they put a new roof on. It does help the appearance with new siding roof and everything else when you pull into a place i do agree with that but most people are looking probably more interior than next year but i think longevity of everything um you know better than anybody a lot of tenants would be mad with ongoing roof leaks uh ongoing gutter problems right and, and things of that sort that you know might put a bad taste in their mouth so it's always good to be proactive and then also you know better than anybody with you know you kind of never know with the economy and everything else it's usually sure whenever you can afford to do the roof i would always say do the roof replace it COVID was a good example of price increasing and everything that yeah um, i know a lot of roofs that you know not even from um the multifamily side but everything that price increasing jumped so much that a lot of people were kicking themselves when they should have did it you know the year before and then the next right. year with price increasing they're like it's how much more you know just for material yeah. more. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I would always say, if, you know, as far as from, uh, you know, gutters and everything else like that, it's huge yeah. just because it usually affects other things for foundations yeah. and everything else like that. Yeah. So yeah. as yeah. long as you're proactive with maintenance and everything, that's huge. Because, yes. Uh, you know, a little project can turn into a big project fairly quick to where you're forking out a lot more than what you want. Heck yeah. Do. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So be proactive, make sure we're doing our preventative maintenance and if you got the money, replace the roof. Everybody heard that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's coming from, you know, maybe just a roofer. I always want you to do a roof, but, you know. <laughs> no, no. What you say is fair. It's fair, right? And I get it. And then as far as, like you said, with, if you don't keep up with the repairs, then you just end up with more damage, right? Right. Um, and so it's it's just always best to keep an eye out, like, yeah, whenever I'm out on a site, I'm always looking up, I'm looking around, I'm looking for water intrusion, like those types of things that you should, you know, where are my gutters? Are they pointing out? Are they, you know, holes in 100%. the percent. Yeah, 100%. And yeah. you guys are, you know, as far as BRG and other apartments um, are very proactive with the windstorm we just had as a good example. Um, call me out or call roofer out, yeah. come out and take a look and just see if there is any damage. Because, sure. you know, a lot of the times you're not going to be able to even see half the damage. So then that's going to cause a roof leak. And then I think a lot of your tenants are usually pretty proactive, but sometimes they don't like to tell you. Um, right. Sometimes when certain things, as far as a roof leak goes, I mean, they might not even sure. notice it that, you know, up on the roof, you'd be like, this should be leaking. And, right. you know, that's when we usually find more things that might be causing you interior problems. And then you exactly the drywall and everything else to where, you know, you're paying yeah. more than what you should be. Right, right. Yeah. So we've talked enough about roofs today. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> I think you've given some great advice, but we're going to get to know you uh, personally a little bit. Okay. Okay. You ready? So, um, your favorite book? Favorite book? I think I, that you've uh, ever read. I would probably say I, I kind of racked my brain. Um, I'm not a. <laughs> You know, I got, you know, the the good investor. And then I also, I put, I like fiction. So I like the Da Vinci Code. That's a pretty okay. good book. Um, I like children's books. You know, I can't read very well. So, Aww. you know, The Hungry Caterpillar awesome. is a really good book for me. You know, I like, all the yeah. Authors. you know, I am a roofer. So, you know, I don't like sophisticated books and everything else like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be sophisticated. <laughs> no, I've never read it. Is it Da Vinci Code a long book? Um, no, it's not crazy long. Um, okay. I guess if you're a reader, I would say it's probably a normal size book. Um, okay. You know, and it's I couldn't even tell you uh, how long ago the Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons. They have a whole series of it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's okay. I got it. Yep. Yeah, and then they made movies about it. Tom Hanks right. was in it too. So. Right. 
Um, but you know, that was my always favorite book. You know, we can go back to yeah. high school, I guess, where we had to read like uh, the tale of two cities and everything else like that. But yeah. I don't like the code, so yeah. That's What's cool. your favorite? Um, the question is, do you ever get asked what your favorite book is? Uh well, um <laughs> it's actually a, a series of books. Um Twilight. No, no. I mean, I love the movies, but no. Uh, this particular author, um, he writes this, this a mix between like a little romance, but more like action and plot twist. Like that, did that just happen? Like I never expected this to happen. Um, most of his books are like um, based around like Los Angeles area normally, um, but Is it he like had a crime, a, like a crime no, series or. Like, um, like it's fiction it kind of goes in the story no (laughs) (laughs) no so he basically like it it could be a group of friends and it goes into kind of like each of their individual stories and then kind of how they all come together um however this last set of books that i read read by by um he you you thought it was just another one of his like kind of love story like action but it, this dude ended up being like a contract killer oh, yeah it was like a total plot twist so it's like four books i have the final one however um he the author passed away uh, oh. probably about two years ago and i am sentimental about reading the last one so sitting oh. on my nightstand um and i i hardly have any time to read anymore i used to read all the time but uh right. yes yeah, so um his name do you like is the Eric- paper do you like the paperback i see i like yes. paperback books Yes. I don't know. Makes like I said, you know, I, I feel you know, flipping yep. the pages. But I know a lot of people. I don't know if people still use those. What are those reading the audio books? Yeah, or even those reading tips. They still have those. Um, oh yeah, the like the Kindle. Kindle. Yeah, I don't know if people yeah. still. I haven't seen the Kindle do. in a while. I so. have one upstairs collecting dust. <laughs> do you? I don't know if people still have it or those. I think there was one that failed, Nook or something like oh, that. Yeah. Uh, they used to have those too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I am a, um, a paperback, hardback book reader for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my favorite. I'll get to it one day. You'll get uh, to it one day. <laughs> so I keep um, everyone I've interviewed thus far. I've told them I've never listened to a podcast. However, uh, um, share with me your favorite one and why it's your favorite. Um, I like. Well, so I listen to a lot of sports podcasts, um, like around the NFL, I like NFL, I like watching football. So they usually uh, they talk about everything and anything as far as football goes. Um, I like also kind of ones like there's another one. How did this get made? Um, I think it's one and it's kind of neat because they make fun of bad movies. So like. Mm-hmm trying to think of a movie they literally <laughs> pick movies and they go how did this essentially get made with like you know the money and everything yeah have? and it ranges yeah. everything from like uh i'm trying to think of some of the movies they even have on there like time cop i don't know if you remember that one uh with uh john claude van damme and then okay yeah and then they have even newer ones um, like the Fast and Furious and all those. So I just like it. I like the people that are on I'm there. So I mean, they're just very funny people. I even yeah. even haven't seen half the movies, but they kind yeah. of have the conversation back and forth. So same yeah. with uh, you know, all my NFL, um, well, yeah, you know, podcasts and stuff like that. But I don't know how interested you are in the NFL. So I mean, that's, yeah. you know. You know, I know there's crime ones. It sounds like you're into like murder and everything else. That's well, no, there, so. not really. I feel like the movie one is a good one because uh, there was this particular movie. Oh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was like a star studded cast. Like there were, I mean, big time. Cele- and it was awful. And I'm like, first of all, how did all these celebrities agree when they read the script to do this movie? Because it's just that bad, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, and th- and that's what they go into to where, and I, I kind of like the the business side of it where they go into an explanation of how it even okay. did get made to where, like you said, right. they trick somebody into making it, like where there'll be like an A-cast celebrity and they're like, well, right. 
you know, they had some sort of stipulation that he had to do another movie, and you know, so yeah, and you yeah. just don't want to have. I'm sure you've seen your movies. They don't want to be there, but they're like, hey, or they threw, you know, essentially a lot of money at them. Right. But, you know, half of them get tricked into reading the script, you know, and then they're, you know, they're like, yeah. it's just the whole thing. It's just the layers behind the scenes. And then even the money yeah. would be missing on these movies and stuff like that, you know. So wow. I find it interesting, so. Right. And that sounds, I mean, now, like I said, that one sounds interesting because there's some, like I said, there's, and I'm a big, like, avid movie. I'm pretty good at picking a good movie. So when I pick a bad one, I'm like, what? Yeah. Who See, are, I, yeah. Like and I like the bad movies because they're, I like watching them because they're kind of like a, kind of like a train wreck. You can't look away. Like, you know, it's kind <laughs> of, it becomes it. more like, I like Sharknado <laughs> and like all those really, you know, yeah, that's pretty bad. The fast and Furious, they're off the wall, you know, type of stuff that I, I do like them. So I kind of like, like, you know, I just, right. saw, you know, they're in space now and everything else. So it's like, oh, well, come on. Yeah, See, that's the, what, <laughs> so, so it, it's just off the wall like that yeah. stuff. So I get it. I I I am not. I know people out in social media land are going to be like, "What?" But I'm not a huge rock fan as an actor. I think he's a great person, mm-hmm. but I just think um, I'm just not. I can't watch <laughs> him for a whole hour overact. If that makes sense. Yeah, and he's a, he's got a set role in every movie. Where every he, movie. Every movie, he's the same uh, same yeah. character as far as it goes. Yeah. So, you know, I know a lot of people might get mad about that, but I've I never seen him play a serious role where he's yeah, a right. doctor doing, you know, a surgery or anything like that. So it's the same so. role. Every movie. So, <laughs> Every yeah. Movie, the action yeah. figure, you know, the new Arnold Schwarzenegger type of character. So, right. Exactly. You got it. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, sorry, sorry, The Rock, if you see our video. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's going to be watching this, too, so. <laughs> so what's your favorite pastime or hobby? What do you like to do when you're not roofing? Drinking. <laughs> you have a particular uh, favorite drink? A favorite drink? Um, <laughs> uh, pretty much, I like beer. So, you know, okay. and I like... Uh, you know, I know as far as IPAs, I like all that stuff. I get a little burned out on a lot of them, but I'm still yeah. pretty basic as far as it goes. So like okay. I drink like yingling and all those type of things. And I still okay. drink the, you know, the bourbon and everything else like that. But usually um, IPAs, you know, stouts and all those is kind of my, you know, I can only drink okay. when it gets warmer out too. I don't know how some of those guys can drink a lot of those. So. No way. Yeah. Yeah. So drink. So wait a minute. Now I'm gonna. You're on your Instagram profile. There's a picture of you. Are you like up on a mountain or something? Where were you? I was at Lake Tahoe. Okay. That photo. Um, I was out there for so. Besides drinking, if we're gonna, you know, pick there we go. Times, you know, um, I I haven't been able to do it as much, but I used to snowboard a lot during the winter because with nice. being a roofer, we don't do if it's a bad winter and we can't do as much. So that was, you know, that was my vacation time. So I would always, I, I always like the winter time for snowboarding. So we were kind of trying to hit a lot of mountain ranges um, out west and everything else, but Lake Tahoe is that photo taken. Okay, so beautiful out there, but when we were out there, there wasn't much snow, of course, you know. So, but it's fun. Uh, it's a, it's a little trickier to do because it's not the uh, cheapest hobby, I guess, is the right way, you know. Okay. But what's your favorite hobby? Uh, it's shopping a hobby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's I guess it. it is. <laughs> Drinking and shopping at the same time. You know? Yeah, pretty much. I can do both. I can multitask. <laughs> <laughs> shopping, though. I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I love shopping. Yeah. Um. I guess I. I would. In this day and age, I probably could have been a personal shopper. I used to actually aspire to do that. Like, be a what personal. What is a like, personal? Uh, so basically a like a stylist or shop for someone who doesn't necessarily know how to style or put their clothes together, things like that. Really? Or, yeah. So would you go with them to do the shopping or do you? Not go- necessarily. I just do it for them and bring it to them. And yeah. Hmm. So did, did you ever no. do that for anybody? No. No. 
Are you going to? <laughs> I don't know. You need a personal shopper? Yeah, I mean, I usually wear the same two clothes. It's neither a Bernica <laughs> Brothers shirt and uh, work pants and boots. So, you know. Well, you I could bedazzle that for you. I could get it. Bedazzle it. Go to, go to Ed Harding and get me some jeans that, <laughs> you know. I don't know if those are Ed Harding's still around. I don't, I, you know. I don't, I don't know think, either. I don't usually, <laughs> I don't think I'll too much stuff as far as, right. you know, pretty simple. So, you know. <laughs> But uh, okay, so tell me your favorite food. Favorite food. Um, I would probably go with pizza. I think pizza is pretty tough to not be. Yeah, that's true. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that I'm like, man, I gotta have that. You know, my my grandpa and me uh, love fried chicken, so. Yeah. We eat a lot of, as you can tell, you know, we eat a lot of fried chicken. Um, but my grandpa is a professional um, fried chicken taste tester half the time. So, right. he, you know, he tells me the hot spots and everything else and, you know, all right. that to where he thinks it's good. He thinks it's bad. You know, usually the hole in the wall, like everything else is usually yep. pretty good yep. um, as far as it goes. But yeah, you know, between fried chicken and pizza, I'm not really a picky person, so most things you put in front of me, I'm going to eat, you know, okay. it's probably a problem, but yeah, I'm not really it's like all good. hamburger. <laughs> I love, you know, how about you? Yeah. What's your favorite food? Uh, oh, that's tough. Yeah. I that's like a little question for me. I like Mexican uh, of late. Um, well, Mexican food, I, but if food. I were to say, yeah, if I were to say favorite, it would probably be Italian. Italian. Mm-hmm. Was there a certain dish type of Italian? Like, are we talking like Olive Garden Italian? No. Or are we talking like, no. you know, and I don't even know good Italian. We were talking about this the other day, good Italian restaurants in Cincinnati. I know there's a few of them, but. Yeah. So the one I liked close, it was called Vincino's and it was um, off of Chester Road. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, over by Princeton High School and it closed. Uh, but that was my favorite. It's more much is very authentic. You stepped in and it was like you were transformed in kind of like an like Italy, the in, in the inside of the restaurant. With the big mural on the wall of the, yeah. the hand painted with the yeah. the, the gondola yeah. that they, yeah. they have painted on the wall and everything else like that. Yeah. <laughs> I've never exactly. been there. <laughs> so, what's your favorite? What's your favorite dish though? There's a reason you like Italian. Um well, I guess. I like a thin pasta, like an angel hair. So, and I like to mix my sauces. So I like red and white mixed. Mm -hmm. um, chicken Parmesan, I guess, would be, yeah. I like chicken Parmesan. Yeah. Chicken yeah, it's good. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I'm the interviewer. You're the interviewer. <laughs> Well, um, I don't know how many times you get asked these questions as far as it true? goes. This so is true. This is true. You put me on the spot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you don't have a pet. Oh, you do have a pet. No pets? I have no pets. I can't have a pet at my place. So oh, Got it. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. If I would you love could, to have a pet, so. would you do cat or dog? Dog. Dog person. So. Big dog, little. Uh, I like big dogs, but I think um, my wife would like a little dog. So yeah. that's where we probably butt heads. It doesn't, <laughs> you know, anything else we don't butt heads, but we butt heads on the animal that we're eventually going to have. So, right. <laughs> but I, I like bigger dogs, you know. Yeah. But when I say bigger, you know, Great Dane may be a little too big for me, but yeah. I grew up with golden retrievers, so you know, oh, I like yeah. golden retrievers, maybe a little, you know, around that size. But yeah. I think she likes littler because she grew up with littler dogs. But they both have their pros and cons, I guess. So. Oh yes, I have one of each. So yes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Now you have yeah. the, the new one too. So yes, you know. <laughs> and he has his own total attitude. I think bigger dogs are more calm. Yeah. No, not a whole lot of bark, unnecessary barking, you know, you feed them, let them go play. And that's kind of it. Mm -hmm. Little dogs are much more demanding. So mm -hmm. a little yeah. more hyper. That's what oh, I mean. yeah. That's the debate. You know, the littler ones, they're kind of a little more, I guess, chatty. And then they're a little more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Compared to the big dogs, like you said, that's my experience with most big dogs is they're very chill. 
yeah. you know, yeah. everything else, but you know, tend to destroy your house. I think is a big thing. You know, the bigger ones. Well, do. Yeah. yeah. So my dog is probably he teeters between like forty and fifty pounds, and mm-hmm. now that he's you know he's thirteen, so it, you know a nice soft bed, and that's it. It's he's good. <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't do much more than that so and he's got um, to figure it out he's got to figure yeah it out. he's got to figure it out he's smart <laughs> <laughs> so a favorite movie <laughs> can't believe uh, it. i think what i put was naked gun and i think i stand behind and i don't <laughs> know how the age group is as far as i don't know how okay. naked gun I, do. I know a lot of people remember Naked Gun. You know, they made, yeah. I think they made three of them. I was going to write like Police Academy 2 on there, but <laughs> oh, oh. Naked Gun. you know, I like those okay. kind of those older, but I like that type of humor. Like Airplane is another one yes. that yes. I find hilarious. So that type of humor, I like Naked Gun and all those. How about you? Uh, so I, it was Naked Gun two and a half. No, two and a half. Remember, yeah. Yeah. Now, did they make a third one? I think they made a third one. I don't know. I remember Naked Gun. I remember Naked Gun two and a half. And Leslie Nielsen was uh, very funny. Mm -hmm. Um, Favorite movie? That's tough. Uh, For a long time, it used to be My Best Friend's Wedding. Okay. uh, With Julie Roberts. Uh, I am a big, so I'm a dry humor. So I like um, Steve Carell. I like Jason Bateman, right? Mm. They're funny, but they're it's like they're not trying to be funny type. Right. Yeah. They're just Very kind dry. of awkward. Yeah. 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 So uh, anything with, with both of them in it, I'll watch. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you for a rom-com type of person. So. Oh, I like a good rom-com. Rom-com. <laughs> Always. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like a good rom-com. Rom-com. <laughs> Do you like them? Do you watch them? No, not too many rom coms. You know, I watch uh, <laughs> um, I watch a lot of Disney movies. You know, same. I'm just kidding. I'm not in the Disney movies. I, well, <laughs> now I'm insulted. I That's am. I don't watch any Disney. Oh my all, god! So. Did you see? Did you watch the Mario Brothers movie? No, I did not. No, no, I haven't seen that. So, oh, did you see it? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Was it good? Yes. Was it it really was good. good. I was one of the what? few adults in the theater. No Where kids with me. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, did you have kids with you? Or were you just by yourself nope. watching it? Where they're like, <laughs> Sam and I went to watch it uh, because we, what you did, know. What did Sam think of it? Is big he liked thing. it as well. Did he like it as well? Very smart uh, one. So, yeah, he liked it a lot. No, uh, I, I, go on. What are you saying? No, go ahead. You're a big Bengals fan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bengals, big Reds. Time. Any okay. Cincinnati. I don't okay. watch a lot of FC Cincinnati. I've actually never been to an FC Cincinnati. That's on my my things to do. But same. You know, obviously Bengals, Reds, you know. Okay. You know. Besides that, how about you? You I assume you're a Bengals fan. You're not a Bengals fan? Well, I, I, you think I'm gonna say that on here? No. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say you're not. Are you like a Ravens fan or something like that? I don't. I don't. I I just don't really watch sports. Oh, like okay. yeah, I'll go, but um, I'm not gonna just sit and watch a game just to watch it, right? I watch the Super Bowl normally. That's about it. Uh, yeah, not basketball. Not, and I come from a family of like my grandma even still watches golf. Like she watches any sport on the TV. So yeah. I don't know how I didn't get it, but yeah, I'm not a. <laughs> I, I, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could be so pretty you... time consuming too. So yeah. 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 Did you ever? There was play a lot sports? of years they weren't good either. So you had to endure yeah. a lot of the bad games with the good. So yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, did you ever play any sports? Yeah. So in high school, I wrestled and played baseball as okay, my cool. two was my two cool. sports but um I wrestled all four years so and then when I was little I played them all football uh, baseball yeah. you know I didn't play a lot of soccer you know yeah and, well my build I don't think I was uh, I don't think I was made for soccer so it's a know. lot of fancy footwork yeah, yeah yeah I'm not I'm not that quick either you know yeah. so baseball know. In the, you know fixated spot you know and then wrestling you yeah. know I'm not moving around a crazy, a crazy amount as far as it goes. So right. So did you like wrestling better or baseball? 
I liked wrestling just because I wrestled my all my life, so I liked it. But I ended up getting hurt um, senior year, so it's kind of a bummer. You know, your varsity yeah. year as far as yeah. it goes. But I like wrestling just because it's you know it's one on one type of thing. You know, you don't got yeah. any, you know. Um, but it was good. Uh, it was good discipline and everything else like that. So, That's cool. you know, I used to be a lot skinnier when I was wrestling. So, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> but I like wrestling. Well, um, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so do you have a favorite band or concert or? Well, Nickelback is a Creed, Nickelback, okay. Pender. I'm just kidding. I mean, I, I I do like Nickelback. I think they get a you lot. Do? Of hate. Yeah, I do like, but I like <laughs> okay. a lot of people. I always say that and people usually get thrown when they're like Nickelback. Yeah, everybody right. hates Nickelback. And then really? some people will catch the fact I said Hinder and, uh, you know, but I also like, like, um, I like Zach Brown band, um, okay. you know, like country. And then I like a little bit of everything. So I'm not really, you know, I like pop and everything else like that. So that's cool. You know, I like a lot. How about you? Uh, my favorite artist of all time, like, is Stevie Wonder, hands down. Stevie Wonder? Super talented, yeah. Uh, hands down. Hands down? Yep. Nothing else? No type of, no I mean, one else I compares. listen to anything, I listen to anything, any type of music, any genre, any, I, you know, um, but if you were to ask me my favorite, it would be him all day. Him? Yeah. Yeah, I got to see him in concert once. It was amazing. Uh, but yeah, I grew up, my mom listened to him a lot and uh, just picked it up from her. Really? Yeah. And her nickname is Stevie. So uh, that's the even crazier part about the it. crazier so. part about it. Yeah. So you had to like it and she had to like I it had, too. And she right? had to like it, right? <laughs> She <laughs> had to like it. She was like, well, I have to like it now, so... <laughs> So, uh, tell us a little bit about your family. Family. So I just mm -hmm. had a boy. Um, mm -hmm. He's five months old. So, mm -hmm. um, and I'm married. Um, I have a. Uh, his name's Wes. So, Wes. I'm trying to make more roofers. You know, because I need okay. more. Okay. So, trying yeah. to bring in multiple roofers is all I can okay. do. Okay. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> but it no and that yeah that's all I and then obviously you know grandpa dad I work with every day so yes um you know I don't have any relatives besides grandpa and dad in the business we used to have a lot of cousins and everything but as time went they they were wise they went to college and you know, Stop. <laughs> like, you know, this is a good um in my family there's there's a lot of us but uh, there's I would say 99% of them came and did roofing. So it was kind of an yeah. intervention. You know, I bet. That was a rite of passage. You had to go do roofing for at least a summer. I bet. Know, as far as it goes. And then, you know, you went and you went on, you know, so. Yeah, you did it for quite a few summers, if I recall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 yeah. So I think I've been roofing. I was rocking my brain the other day. So I've actually been doing it for 18 years but you know when I was in college um and everything else so it's not technically like full time but every break and everything during the summer you know as soon as I had my driver's license my dad had the same role I fear you know you got to work yeah. so yeah. sure enough every summer I was doing roofing until well, obviously now so yeah <laughs> but that's awesome that. though yeah that's good you know you were the one that stayed in it and is continuing to grow the business and then surely i'm sure that you know it'll pass i'm actually away. retiring next month so. no you're not no you're not <laughs> <laughs> we got too many projects going right now no, you're yeah not. well i wanted to talk this is why i'm actually having this conversation with you too so i i found a place in boca that i'm going to move to <laughs> yeah, so. it's not true but <laughs> it's available for business <laughs> So uh, share with me an uh, interesting detail about you. Oh, man. Um, I think I joked around with what you actually asked me, but, <laughs> you know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of something interesting that no one would know. 
So what what does this have to be? More of like a trait, like Anything. a personality it doesn't thing, doesn't matter. A hobby, like whatever. Something I mean, like, doesn't have to really be anything. weird. Like can it be no. really weird? No, no, not that weird. Um, um, I actually, it's not really that weird. I have a, a train collection, you know, like hobby trains. <laughs> yeah, my grandpa gave me his set. Um, not, not Grandpa Berniker, the one I worked for. My other yeah. grandpa. Okay. gave it to me and he passed away um so i have that and i've been slowly building on a train collection oh, yeah man. so you know a lot of people are like you you know not me per se but you know as yeah. far as like, that's just something a little different i'm trying to think of anything else no that's that, cool so you know. uh my my stepdad before he passed um was an avid train collector and he actually had a hobby room so like where he made like bought the cars and painted hand painted yeah. and all that yeah and he built a um like a track mm. where it, he could lift it and that's where his he sat in the inside yeah. and the train went around yeah it was pretty cool so see yeah. not well, that they're, pretty, they're, they're pretty they're pretty awesome. intricate i'm sure you've seen them down at the museum i don't know if you've ever been down yeah, there yeah i did and all that so and the crazy thing about it is the money it's a it's another hobby but, and I don't really buy a lot of them because I, my grandpa had a slew of them. So I don't right. really have a hobby room or anything. I don't have enough room, but and hopefully one day I can have, you know, me and my dad yeah, always talk right. about, he and even grandpa worker, maybe running them in the office. You know, I, you've seen them above, yeah. running around and stuff like that. It's on our to-do list of many things. It's, oh. you know, but that's the that one thing, I guess. You know. I like that. I like yeah. that. That's that's neat. See, if you, all you gotta do is get it out there, more people. You know, it's not a, it's different, mm -hmm. but it's still it's very interesting. Very no, interesting. So now that you ask me, I gotta ask you, what is oh, your yeah? I didn't think it was coming. So it's it can be something really weird. I'm the interviewer, so I'm allowed to ask you. You know, it can be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, something off the wall, um, you know, you collect uh, flamingo statues and you have them all over your house and stuff like that, you know, a clown person, you know, you have a bunch of clown memorabilia uh, all over, you know, I've seen that, you know, places I've um, uh, Okay. My parents mm -hmm. were born on the same day, same year, hours apart. Wow. Yeah. That's nuts. So were they born, nice. uh, with that said, were they born in the same, not the same hospital, but the same location? Yeah, different, uh, different hospitals. Um, same city, though. Hmm. Yeah, both in Cincinnati, but yeah, same um, day, year, everything. Like, hours Wow. Oh, that's meant to be. That's crazy. I know. <laughs> Did you say the same hour, too, or just the same No, no it was just that. hours apart. Yeah, hours apart, but... Um, and then uh, the day I was born, mm -hmm. and I'm going to date myself, uh, but uh, <laughs> Evil Knievel, do you remember Evil, Evil Knievel here? Okay. Yeah. So he tried to jump Snake River Canyon and mm -hmm. broke all the bones in his body on the day I was born. So Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is something interesting. And I bet a lot of people today don't know who Evil Knievel is. Exactly. So. So, yeah. like I said, I dated myself a little bit, but it's all good. Right. Yeah, I don't think, I you know, that was a big deal back then. It Evil was. Because yeah. I remember even the toys and everything, they had to be Evil Can Evil. So yeah. That's not, so. yeah. So, now it's out yeah. there. I don't know if you've been keeping your age a secret, but that <laughs> someone might start doing the math. So. <laughs> that's all right. With age comes wisdom. That, there you go. Yeah. There, there you, you go. go. <laughs> so, if you could be a TV character, who would you be? You like that one. I, I, I think Magnum <laughs> P.I. Magnum P.I. You know, I think that's a that's a good one. And I was trying to think that's a loaded question because, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I was trying to think okay. of somebody else that, you know, uh, but I like Magnum P.I. Is it? Do you want me to explain why Magnum PI? Or just, yes, I would like you to explain why Magnum PI. Well, we're both incredibly good looking, so I think we both <laughs> carry that trait. <laughs> on with you know you know but i just always liked uh my mom used to watch a lot of like okay Nash, magnum pi yeah. um, all that stuff but um <laughs> i know they remade all those i haven't seen the new ones of magnum pi 
um, yeah. and all the movies too. So they remake everything. So you know, Bluey. <laughs> I, I would pick Bluey too. I really okay. Know, I identify as Bluey a lot. You know. So you so you're very mischievous. Then yes, if you if you yeah if you relate to Bluey, you're pretty mischievous. Yeah. yeah, I actually don't watch. My my kid's only five months, so I, he's not watching Bluey yet. So, I, <laughs> so then you're watching it by yourself. You can't yeah, I'm just sitting there, you know, <laughs> I'm binging a lot of Bluey. I don't know what season we're on at this point, you know. I thought, you know, I, I thought it was a murder mystery. So I thought, you know, Bluey would, you know, so, but no, I, uh, I really, the only thing I know, and I don't know why, because all my friends and everything else, you know, the Bluey theme song. So that's it, you know, the yes. beginning, you know, that's engraved in my brain. I guess it's engraved in a lot of people's brains. So agreed. Agreed. What's your favorite or what's your yeah, you knew that was coming. <laughs> what would be your character? Oh my god. Lucifer um, from the show Lucifer. No. <laughs> No idea. I honestly, uh, I, I I don't know. I'm trying to think of like shows even that I I watched. Um, I do you, I, hmm. do you have a TV show you even watch right now? Yeah, it's show? called uh, Will Trent. It's like a detective show. Okay, it's really good. So. Um, really but I don't like, want to be a detective. You're really into like detective. That's what I was gonna say. Like you say no crime, but like crime detective, things of that sort, forensic, I guess, you know, things of that sort type of shows. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah. I was gonna say for me, like and say NCIS, but I couldn't remember the main character. I think oh, it's, yeah. Um, I don't, uh, I don't yeah. watch that one as often. I like I said, Will Trent is it's his first year out. Um and it was just really, really good. So I hope second season is going to be just as good. Yeah. yeah. I kind of figured you more of like a, a you know murder she wrote type of character. You know, you were going to say no. that. <laughs> no, 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 Angela <laughs> Lansbury. Quit dating me, right? <laughs> you know. The, just... So before we wrap this up, anything else you want to share about yourself? Um. No, I don't know nope. if there's anything else people want to know about me. <laughs> and, well, uh, <laughs> well, I will say it has been an absolute pleasure today. Uh, this was probably one of the funnest interviews I've done so far. And we, the other interviewers aren't going to like that. So you better, you know, I, I, I've, I've, I've seen the other interviews are going to be mad, you know. I They're gonna come after you. Now you have The Rock and all the other people you interviewed are going to be coming <laughs> after you after this interview. And you're going to have to deal with a lawsuit. The same with me from The Rock. I don't think he takes it too kind. So, you know. <laughs> oh, job burner. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I truly thank you for today. Thank you for agreeing to do the spotlight. Thank um, you for again. having me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Burner, John Bernerker with Bernerker Brothers Roofing. Thank you all for joining us today for our, our, our uh, weekly member spotlight. And I hope you have a great Friday.